So you you've been kind of in the midst, uh, in the in the streets, in in the practice of working with young people, and then you've taught at a institution of higher learning for forty years for a long yeah, time. Yeah, long, long time. Um, I want to talk about ask you a question about theological education. Knowing what you know about young people, about the state of um, America, um, how do you think theological education should be preparing youth ministers and people who will be working with adolescents? Um, what do they? What do, do theological education need to be thinking about and doing as they prepare these people? I, I like how Karl Barth said we've got to read the Bible in one hand, but we need to hold the newspaper in the other. Otherwise, our faith just becomes a ticket into heaven and a license to ignore the world that we live in. And I'm convinced that part of what has happened to our theology is that, uh, you know, as my grandmother used to say, we're so heavenly minded, we're not much earthly good. So we end up having our head in the skies where the, what I think actually happens in Jesus <laughs> is, is we move from words on paper to the word become flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And theology has to be something you can touch and feel. And one of my neighbors who Spanish is her primary language and she says, we make some of these ideas way too complicated. She says like incarnation, incarnational ministry. She says, you order your burrito con carne, it means with meat. <laughs> and she says, Jesus is God incarnate with meat, with flesh, so we see what God is like. And that's what we are to be in the world, the body of Christ. We're to flesh out God's love. So I think the great challenge with theological ed education is kind of um, translating that into action. And when it comes to discipleship of young people, one of the things I've heard Tony say so often is that the question becomes not for our young people, are you going to be a doctor or a teacher, but what kind of doctor, mm -hmm. what kind of teacher are you going to be? It's not just about what are you going to do when gr you grow up, but who are you becoming? Mm -hmm. And how do your gifts intersect yeah. with the world's pain? When I think about theological education and what I would like to see improved, I find that most people coming out of seminaries and divinity schools know a great deal about the great theologians of our time, Moltmann, uh, Pendenberg, uh, Bart, Bruner. You know. They don't know enough about the Apostle Paul. They don't know enough about scripture. Uh, I grew up in an old-fashioned Bible-believing Baptist church. Memorizing scripture was crucial to us. I mean, we had Bible drills. We, uh, memorize scriptures. We would earn points, and if you earned enough points, you, they paid your way to k summer camp. And I memorized and memorized and memorized. I, I find that seminary students cannot quote scripture. They haven't memorized scripture. They, they have all the right ideas. I'll give you a good il illustration of what I'm dealing with. I was once uh, asked to speak for the National Council of Churches annual meeting. And so the representatives of all the major denominations were there. And uh, just before I sp and they asked me to speak on why evangelicals are leaving mainline denominational churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, just before I spoke, uh, Andrew Young, uh, you know who he is, spoke before me, and he read the resolutions, the resolutions that this group had come up with. And as they read through the resolutions, they were brilliant and wonderful resolutions. When I got up to speak, I said, um, every one of those resolutions is beautiful, wonderful. The attitude towards women, the attitude towards racism, attitudes towards consumerism. I mean, it went down the list. I said, I was saying amen to every one of them. Here's my problem. What is the difference between the resolutions of the National Council of Churches and the platform of the Democratic Party? Hmm. I mean, you could have taken this document and passed it over here. They said, well, uh, what should be the difference? I said, this should be the difference. If you're, going to, if you're going to make a statement on race relations, it should begin with a biblical text. The Bible says in Galatians 3.28, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, Scythian nor barbarian, male nor female. 
and quote a few other verses like that. Given these scriptural manifestations, we therefore say you cannot really be a follower of Jesus and be a racist because you would be in violation of scripture. There has to be a reference to scripture. You're going to make a statement about the environment. You need to quote from Romans 8 where it says all of creation is suffering, is in travail. Nature is in suffering indeed, waiting for the sons and daughters of God to rescue it. Mm. You got to quote scripture because the reason that you exist is to in fact help the people in the congregations understand that you're not just making this thing up because you have a political agenda. You are, make, you are saying these things because the Bible says these things. Mm. I said, if you listen to Billy Graham and ask, why did people listen to him? Listen to a Billy Graham sermon. Every third line is, the Bible says, the Bible says, mm. the Bible says. I one time listened to one of his sermons on television and started counting. 23 times in the course of the sermon, he said, the Bible says, and he would quote the scriptures. Until the graduate from theological seminary can not only make a theological statement that's sound and valid, but unless he can legitimate that with scripture, he or she has failed in getting the education he needs or she needs to relate to the congregation. The people in the congregation could, could not care less about the theologians you know. They would like to know what the Bible says about the things you're talking about.